Hey there, good morning and welcome to Math 8, Unit 1, Lesson 7. This is called No Bending or Stretching. We're going to be comparing measurements before and after translations, rotations, and reflections. These are three main concepts we've been talking about so far. He began the day's lesson, first of all, by looking at some, some units here and looking at the, uh, the whole numbers and doing some estimating to find a segment, first of all, to the nearest one-eighth of an inch. We're just looking at it and saying, well, let's look at how do we use a ruler here. If these are eights, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five eighths here. So I'm going to go four, and I'm going at about five eighths of an inch there on that one here. When I look at number two, it says find the nearest uh, you know, decimal, 0 0.1 of a unit. When I look in here, I notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all my hash marks here are ten. This is like a centimeter thing. So if I have all the way to four on my line, I'm gonna have at least four, and I'm gonna go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go about 4.7 there on the length of that segment. When I have to look at number three, and that wants me to estimate to the nearest eight. So I'm using this kind of sort of scale to figure out what that could be. Again, looking between three and four, something somewhere around here <coughs> would be about three and a half. So I know I'm bigger than a half, but I also know I'm not all the way to the four yet. But then if I take this part, I can notice that, gosh, I'm about halfway between those two points. So if I look back up in here, that means I'm probably in the same spot where I was before. I'm somewhere around three fourths of the way through. Think of it like almost like quarters. I've gone three and one fourth, two fourths and three fourths. So I'm somewhere around three and three fourths there for that one. Right, if I did the, the eights version, I would probably then I could say, well, if I had eights, then I'd have a little more here, or I could say three and six eighths, same idea. If I want to estimate the same one in terms of uh, what it could be as a, as a centimeter line, well, that's the same idea. This is the halfway, so I'm at least at 3.5 there, but I'm gonna continue going, and I can see I'm at halfway, so I'm somewhere between 3.7 and somewhere between 3.7 and 3.8. I'm somewhere in that range there for where that's gonna be, okay? So that was something you did to start off with, just kind of do some estimation, which helps you later on in this lesson. For number one in your class, you're taking a look at some shapes and you're asked to translate them so that this shape would go to that shape there. And the key thing was to look at how many units something is. We're looking at corresponding sides and angles today, so we can see that this one has a length of two, we have a length of two there, we have a one there, we have three there, two there, we have four on this side, a one and a one. And to make sure that it corresponds, we're gonna have the same length. We're gonna go two, we're gonna go down two, we're gonna go over one, down three, over two, up four, over one, over one, to make sure that everything matches what we had with our original. So in this translation, we're just sliding it over and nothing is changing. We have corresponding sides, they are all the same length, and that's important there. When I look at number two, you had a triangle that asked you to rotate 90 degrees clockwise using R as the center. So to do that, what we were doing, we were taking our shape, we we're gonna take our shape here, and we're gonna just mark it up if it helps to kind of visually see it here. We're taking this triangle, which is a 30 by 60 by 90, and we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I can watch my 90 degree mark here to make sure I end up with a square that snaps right on that line. We're going clockwise, yep, clockwise. And once my, my other square lines up and I have two squares, I know I'm back in business, and now I have my shape. And so my shape for the triangle when I rotate it should look something like that. Again, I can mark that on my my paper. I could put a little mark there and say, well, my point's going to be here, and I have a point somewhere about here. And then I can connect those dots up and say I should have something like here, to here, to here. And what it asks you to do this time is write the measure. And what we want to do here is recognize that if the 30 was over in this space, I'm going to put that 30 over to this space because the angles still correlate as well. If the 60 was over there, on the bottom corner here, because I rotated it up there, now my 60 moves to here, and of course my 90 stays right there. 
So what I'm looking at in these two first little less examples is I have corresponding links or corresponding sides between one to the other. And over here, I have corresponding angles. Nothing is changing here. And so we call these things a rigid uh, transformation, meaning we're not changing the size or the dimensions of the shape. It's staying exactly the same. We're just moving it or rotating it a certain direction there. The same thing is true when you take a reflection of an image. If we're keeping it rigid, we do the same thing. And so we could take this image here and we can reflect it across this line L with the grid paper. We can reflect it across the L and see what we come up with. So if I reflect it here, I just move this point to there. I move this point to there. And I can say I'm going to go over. Well, I'm not quite sure how many I'm going to go over. Looks like I'm going over more than just a whole one. That's my initial line. I'm going over a little bit more than one, than two. I'm going two and maybe about a half or so. If I wasn't sure exactly, again, I could use a ruler or a tracing paper to get that precise. And so I could take this shape right here. I'm going to go ahead and put it right on the edge. I'm going to put it on the edge here. I can take the shape. I can trace it. I can trace it. And trace that line there and trace it here and trace it here. And then we can take it and basically because I put my edge of my patty paper on the axis point here, my reflection line, I can flip it over on the same reflection line. Oops, there you go. And <laughs> put my paper there. And now I can make those points. And so this point's going to be somewhere about here. This one's going to be somewhere about here. And my end point is here. So again, just kind of get underneath your patty paper and make those points so you can see where they're going to be and then play connect the dots. So we have that one, we have that one, we have this one, and we have this one. And even though I'm doing all that, I still have corresponding angles. There's my 90 degrees and my 90 degrees. This one here is still 120 degrees. And this one here is also 90 degrees, it told us. And then this one here is 150 degrees. So even with the reflection, my image stays rigid and I end up with the same thing. And then finally, you look at number three down here and it said, which one? Here are two triangles. Using a if you can use a rigid transformation to take ABC to one of these. And so you had triangle EDB, which was here. And you had triangle CFG, which was here. And it wanted to know which one of these could you you could you say is a rigid transformation of a b c and by looking at it you probably had some ideas with your partners which is great there's a major difference between this one and this one the size is different isn't it we've we've taken from here to here we're not just rotating and moving it we're also shrinking it well that's not rigid rigid means we're keeping the same lengths and the same angles so while the angles might be the same, the lengths definitely are not. This has a length of two, this has a length of three, they don't match. But over here, even though it looks a little different, really, it's the same one. What we've done is we've said, well, let's take this shape, this triangle, and with some rigid transformations, let's move it around. And that's exactly what's been done here. This triangle has been rotated around B to become this way, right? And then it's translated over here to the right, and we end up matching up and we're in good shape. So we would definitely say that this triangle is the one that has a rigid transformation because it keeps the same shape and the same angles and the same sides. So they have corresponding sides. All right, so that was what today's lesson was about. Your summary of that is simply here. Just remember for your notes that a rigid transformation doesn't change measurements on any figures. So our lengths and our angles stay the same. So in our rigid, there's no change measurements. We have corresponding points, we have corresponding sides, and corresponding angles, meaning things match up. That's the point there. Things are going to match up. So we're going to have similar angles. 71.6 is going to match with 71.6. So we're going to have things that align with one another. So then moving into your homework for the day, you were then, then using those same ideas, trying to decide if things were rigid transformations or not. And so you might have a shape like P, and it asks you something like, is this a rigid transformation to go from P to Q? And if you can visually see it just for your eyeballs, you might notice that 
So now there's something happened there. These shapes are not the same, are they? There's a difference. The key difference here is with the angle measurements. This is a very acute angle compared to this angle here, right? Something has changed. But if you were to use tracing paper, you could simply also uh, simply put it on top and go, huh, while the length might be the same of those edges, the angle measurements are quite different. And so we would not say that this is going to be a rigid transformation. So you can write that and explain how your teacher wants you to write things and give, an ex give your own explanation for why those are not the same. It says describe the rigid transformation that takes A to B. It doesn't say just do it, it says describe it. That means with a sentence, write it out. What's it going to be? So to go from A to B, I'm taking this shape A, and here's A, 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 and we want to go to B. So I'm going to just mark it in red so it comes through a little bit brighter. I want to go from A to B. So to go from A to B, what am I going to have to do? Well, I'm going to have to translate it over a bit and then translate it up a bit. So I'm making a translation here from this point to this point. I'm not going to say slide diagonal. I actually want to know how far am I going there. If we look at our grid, I'm going to go over one, two, three. So I'm going to go over three. And then to move from here to here, I'm going to go up one, two, one, two. So I might say right three, up two. But again, that's just note form. You want to describe it and write that out. For number three, is there a rigid transformation that takes A to B? Again, if it's rigid, we're going to have corresponding sides and angles, right? In this case, our angles all look good. They're all 90 degrees. But are the sides corresponding? Mm, probably not. Again, I can just take a look at just one length. If I take this long length right here, do I have that long length anywhere over here? Nope, not going to work out. So our sides don't quite match. So again, explain. And then for number four, we have several ones here. We're going to draw some more transformations looking at the shape. So it says translate shape A, which is this one here. Translate shape A so that A goes to A prime. And you can use some tracing paper if you need to, but you can also just kind of eyeball it as well, up to you. So A, first of all, goes up a diagonal. So I'm gonna go up a diagonal there. There's A prime. I notice that then I go straight vertical. So I go straight vertical there. And then I go across one, two. I'm gonna go across one, two, so here. And then this one, place connect the dots. So I'm gonna connect the dots down to there. So that becomes my my uh, copy of A to A prime using that translation there. The next one says rotate uh, the shape 180 degrees counterclockwise around B. So first I'm going to just draw it in a little bit darker so we can see this. Okay. And because I'm going to go 180 degrees, what that tells me is that as I rotate, because I'm going around B, I want this to end up right here on this line because that's going to be 180 degrees from there. So this shape, we're going to spin it so that it lands over here. This line needs to land over there. I can visually show you what that looks like just real quick. So if I just do this, I have my shape and my shape and my shape and my shape. And here's point B. I'm going to take point B and I'm going to go counterclockwise, which is going to be this direction. I'm going to keep rotating until this line right here, here's my line, uh, this line, until this line snaps in place on my yellow line right there. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for in terms of a picture, right? I want it to snap in place there. So I was here and I rotate 180 degrees until I get to there. So if I look at it from above, I can see that I'm going to have a point right there on this dot, that, that mark. I'm going to point right here. I'm going to point up in here. So I'm going to go one, two, one, two. And there's a point there. And those are my points. So to draw that out, I have this, this. Here's my 180 degree line there. And then connect the dots right there. A couple things that I just noticed when I look at this is I can see that, wow, not only did I go 180, I can see that. My corresponding parts are here to here. I have 180 there. 
So I could have eyeballed the thing and said, well, let's just go over two, over two, and then started from there going up down instead of down one, going up one. And so I could have reflected it that direction there. You know, there's lots of ways to approach these things. It's up to you how you want to see those, okay? And finally, uh, C, we're going to reflect the shape over the line that is shown. So we're going to take this shape here, which is there and there and there and there. And we want to reflect this shape over this line right here. So we're just going to flip it over that line. Reflections sometimes get a little bit tricky because it's just how you can visually see it, especially when they're like angles like this. It needs to be exactly right. So you might want to take a look at, well, if I reflect this thing and get another piece of paper here, if I do reflect it, what's it going to look like? Um, well, let's do this. Let's draw and trace this here. I'm just moving my paper around to get a little bit different angle. If I reflect it on this line right there, what should it look like? I should end up having it be like this. Again, it's kind of like that butterfly look, right? It's going to look like a butterfly when I'm all done. I'm going to have two wings and my, my butterfly in the middle. That's what I'm aiming for. So once I can see what I'm looking for, maybe I turn my paper so that it's just straight and I can just see straight across what's going to happen. Sometimes if you're looking at it this way, it's hard to see that butterfly because it's a little bit sideways and your eyes get a little crisscross. So maybe you want to twist it this way so you can see what's going to happen. So I can tell that I'm going to go from here, I'm going to go kind of up one, two. So I'm going to go from here, I'm going to go up one, two to this point. So that's my first line. So that's matching here. Now from there, I went to the right one. And so in this case here, I'm going to go to the right one, looking at my shape. I'm going to go in this direction, right? It doesn't quite hit the paper. So I'm going to go one right there. Then I went down one, down one. So I'm matching. These are matching, matching. And then I played connect the dots from here to here. So now I have two corresponding pieces. I can see my sides, the corresponding parts, my angles are the same, and I have reflected it over that line. And that's the idea there. Hopefully that helps you out and you're getting the idea of this. Just take some time and practice. So just take your time and hang in there. You can do it. Have a great day.